the site, but uh, if if anybody has any resources for signal processing in APL, I'd be interested. I did a quick search, but I didn't do an exhaustive one. So uh, like I said, I'll put something up on the site, but feel free to add something in the chat if anybody knows anything. Thanks. Um, it might be worth searching for the kind of things you would use for signal processing, like look on APL wiki and stuff for like Fourier transform or Kalman filter. Or yeah, true. Solution. Interested to hear what you find right. anyway. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay, so I remember we were up to partitioned in close. Has anybody skipped ahead to figure out what that is? So me. Uh, what button do we press for enclose again? Let's see. So to right. me, it seems. Sorry. Oh, so for me, it seems like it was doing. Uh, say, if uh, if on the left hand side you have uh, one, two, three, it would enclose the first one one time, like three elements on each side. Uh, one, two, three on each side. Well, could you explain maybe the version we've got here? Do, does this make sense? We've got o one o one enclose one two three four. Oh yeah, sure. Let me. Zero one zero one. Let me make sure it does what I think it does. So it's giving us two, three in the first cell and four in the second cell, apparently. What is? Um, hmm. Okay, that does. My my understanding was wrong. <laughs> ah, okay, no worries. Well, it's all the more interesting. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, I played with it a bit and thought I knew what it did. I <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm getting a sense of what it is. It's looked like the ones are defining groups. So it's taking where the first one is and giving us the numbers there, the letters in this case, and then the second group's defined here letters there yeah if you did you look on the apl wiki Jeremy? i haven't looked at anything at all this is the first time i've looked okay so i was just looking it up in the background and i i great. think it's starting to um they just called it explain basically what you were saying didn't they? it looked like it was a pretty good definition at least starting out okay that second paragraph oh Yeah, it indicates where divisions begin. Cool. It seems pretty straightforward. So each one is the start of a new division. The API wiki example is a bit Era, I think. Or at least that one is. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean, this one. Okay. So then they're saying some dialects, by which I assume they mean dialogue is included. Okay, so that's just saying create two partitions, make this the second have two partitions after the first and then three partitions after that. So it's just creating some empty partitions.
All right. Well, that seems straightforward enough. Um, shall we keep moving along then? Looks like the next one is left shoe under bar. which is written as shift C, I guessed right, shift C, okay. Starting to get the hang of this. Oops. Monadic left shoe under bar means nest. Huh. Let's check API wiki as well, shall we? Nest. It, it's like, yep. It has some, uh, it's kind of like enclosed with some extra logic so that it doesn't nest too many times. If you nest a nest a nest, it doesn't do that. Okay, let's have a look at this example, shall we? So this is, um, that's each, isn't it? And I think this means, is it an element of? And so this adds up how many times an E appears in each word. Oh, okay, it's counting up the words, no worries. But if the user only gives one word, it'll count the E's in each letter because it's going each. Yes. You can apply nest. Okay. So, we've got some examples. I quite like that they're saying like an example of why it would be useful in APL wiki, even if the example's a little bit complicated. Now that's the same as normal enclosed, right? And we can check that. by using um, the tally thing. No, the other thing, match. Okay, they're the same. Um, is this one different? Ah, no, this is, this is different. Okay, I see. So what's the rule it's using? Um, If Y is simple, what does simple mean? I think simple means that it's an array that doesn't contain any arrays. So I think if we did two, three, reshape iota six, that would, yeah, that's the same because this is simple. I, I don't know, I didn't uh, type down where I got the definition, but a simple array is an array of depth, one with all primitive values, such as a string or array of numbers. Cool, perfect. By the way, what happened to our thing that shows like the little squiggle or the thing that tells us, you know, the, and shows us the little arrows? Is that some different kind of boxing? 
Oh, we've got min. I don't want min, max. Okay. Um, I think that tells us whether something's simple. Um, yes. Okay. So if I do this, that's considered. So I think squiggle might mean simple. And this thing might mean not simple, maybe. All right, great. So if it's just a, so basically if it's just an array, like, or a tensor, I guess, then it's going to return it unchanged. Oh, no, sorry. Yes, I see. If it's a, if it's an array, then it encloses it. Is that what it's saying? Yeah, that's it. Okay, so if it's an array, it encloses it. Okay, so there, right, right. So that's enclosed. So if it's an array, it encloses it. Anything else, it does nothing at all. Okay, so they're the three possibilities. So I guess we should show them. The left shoe would have done the same thing, no? In fact, I just tried it on sleep in the example. Yeah. It also worked. Right. A left shoe does the same um, in the case of an array, but not in the case of a scalar or a non simple object. Oh, so, sleep so that's why there. you can see here this is the same. But this is not the same, as you can see, these are different. Mm. Okay. Okay, so the scale in the case of a scalar, right, enclosed does nothing. Okay, so this is called nest. Okay, so they're exactly the same in the scalar case and the and the simple array case, um, but they're different in the nested array case. If it's already a nested array, it doesn't nest it anymore. Great. Um, so then dyadic is partition rather than partitioned in close. Oh, I see. It's something about the the partitions are now defined in a different way rather than ones and zeros. It's whenever the left argument new division. Whenever an element is greater than the name on its left. So here's a new spot. Cool. Okay, and you can skip by setting a zero. Seems powerful. Okay, so by definition, you can split on spaces, for example. So here is a place where it's gone down and therefore it's gonna skip the fourth element, which is a space. And then this here goes up again, so it's going to create a new partition, a new group. Okay, so um, this is, um, I guess, maybe a good time to talk about forks, because their example here is a fork. 
So I guess let's start with Does this example make sense to everybody? Does that make sense so far? It does make cool. It does make sense, but it seems like uh, you know it's uh, quite involved what it can do and the differences between the operators that we've seen here on close. Um, I'm just curious how much of this uh, was in the original specification of APL and how much of this evolved over time. So essentially mm. how much of this is coming from the can I person's paper. Mm. It's, uh, um, it's just curious. Yeah. I assume this classic edition thing would be closer. There is a like a APL dictionary on the J software website, which I guess would be a good place to answer that question. Um, I thought. Um, maybe I'm wrong. Go to the J dic uh, APL dictionary. Oh, yeah, dictionary of APL. Oh, wow, cool. <laughs> so okay, so here's all the symbols, I guess. And, and the way there's an enclosed here. Oh, except it's called superset. That's interesting. So, so the way he arrived on this was even without before he, you know, there, there, there was no implementation initially, right? It was just him well, this trying to find the notation. This was written in 1987, so this was well after there was an implementation. Right. Yeah, the original notation, I don't know what the kind of official, oh, all right, I guess going back here, here we are, a programming language, 1962. So that was a point when there wasn't an implementation. Oh, cool. That's and I think this would be interesting to too, because this is where they actually designed IBM computer systems using APL as a notation. Yeah, that's that. This sounds like very interesting reads. And this Thank book so I have. Sharing this. This book I have. Um, what is it? Oh, it's it's uh, elementary functions. Huh. Yeah, it's uh, it's basically a math textbook for designed at kind of high school level, if I remember correctly. Um, <laughs> wow. Let's see. Amazing. One semester pre calculus course. Yeah. <laughs> um, wow. So he worked with the Fox Lane High School teachers. <laughs> so, is, yeah, it's like that, kind of normal stuff circular functions, inverse reciprocal, slope, exponential polynomials. Um, but um, using that is so cool. This notation, it's the, the the environment, or you know, where, where this uh, was devised, and yeah, sort of the the lore of APL is. is, is Although interestingly, he's got he's got superscripts, you know, here, mm -hmm. which is not what we're using nowadays. We're using star. Although, you know, these reductions are the same. And it's got subscripts. That's also interesting. So anyway, so yeah, it starts off by talking about programming stuff. And then he's got a chapter about functions. All right. Um, this was fascinating. Thank you so much, Jeremy, for sharing this. Uh, now I know where to where to look them up. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, the J Software website, jsoftware.com slash papers has, yeah, a lot of, um, they, they seem to spend a lot of time, you know, scanning in and even OCRing um, a lot of stuff. 
I guess we can do this second example, can we? Yeah, so that's why I'm saying we're going to do forks next. Oh. Yeah. Same left as that fork. So that's a fork. Forks. Okay, so we've already talked about one fork. So the um, basic kind of idea that Adam said that maybe we can steal it directly because I'm not going to do as good a job as he did. Um, where did he mention Fox? Oh, maybe it was after the last study session. Yeah. Okay, well, let's try his example. Um, so maybe um, if we could do um, the reciprocal of three plus um e to the power of three and so here we've got f plus g where f is reciprocal and g is exp and then we're adding them together and so according to his example that should be the same as that, which it is. Does that make sense? So it first applies this to three, then it applies this to three, and then it applies this to the results. So the example we saw a little earlier was um, the very famous, definition of the mean, which is the sum divided by the count. So here's a function. One I function. think we might be in the situation where we cannot see the... Sorry, how's that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, that's perfect. So there's a function, there's a function, there's a function. So make sure you put this operator with the function on its left plus slash, there's the middle function, there's the right hand. So that's F, that's G, and that's what we're using instead of plus, we're using divide. So the sum divided by the count. So that is equal to two plus five plus eight plus nine divided by four. Does that make sense? So plus slash of 2589 divided by tally of 2589. And so something that's very interesting about this is that if we define a function, and this is something thought that Aaron Chu calls, talks about in his Arraycast um, interview, we could define a function called mean. And that's how we would define it, right? Um, and we could run it. And so the interesting point though, is that the word mean has the same number of characters as its definition. So like, <laughs> why? Why define a function for this rather than just use the definition anytime you wanna use it? Because that way you're being more explicit. That's a very good way to spell mean because it actually tells you 
exactly how to do it. So like, it's a totally different way of thinking about software engineering is, yeah, not to create abstractions when you end up with an interaction where the number of letters in its name is the same as the number of letter, number of characters in its definition. So I think that's interesting. So here's another interesting example. Um, okay, so before we do it, we need this one. Um, so, Uh, this one, which is um, a little thing pointing rightward, where's that? Yeah. Okay. Backslash. Okay, this is called right tack. Makes sense. It does look like a tack pointing right. Right tack. And uh, monadic is called same, and it's what we would normally call the identity function. And it just returns whatever it's passed. Okay, not much we can say about that, right? Dyadic is called right, and it always returns its right argument. Okay, and I am pretty sure that left tack will do the exact opposite, except monadic will be the same. So left tack this vertical bar makes sense. Starting to get the hang of their mnemonics for their letters now. Generally you shift to get the kind of the other version of the same thing. Okay. Oops, I forgot to change this. Okay, those are pretty straightforward, yeah? Um, so this next one is a fork, which, um, okay, this one here might help to see each bit separately first, maybe. Oh, this is a dyadic fork. Um, I think a dyadic fork, I'm pretty sure, yes. Or a dyadic, dyadic fork, H of F, oops, F, and G uh, passed in the left hand side and the right hand side. So um, this one's pretty straightforward. That's just going to return the right hand side. So we can then combine those together. to say uh, 
left hand side. Um, and then the enclose. And then the right hand side, which I don't have to put in parentheses, but I'm just going to. Okay. Now look, these are the same, right? Because this fork means that the left hand side and the right hand side are passed to this, and they're passed to this, and then this takes the two results. So this this fork. Um, is something that will separate a string by spaces. And again, you could, um, well, not just by spaces, but by, by whatever's on the left. So we could create a function for that called, you know, split. But the name of the function will actually be more characters than the three characters it takes to define it. Does that make sense? Wouldn't it be more readable to use alpha and omega in such case? And this is very cryptic. I mean, I mean, everything's cryptic when you don't know it, right? I mean, I mean, if you do, you, if you do any work with math notation in math notation, we, you know, it's very cryptic. <laughs> so yeah, mm -hmm. sure, it's very cryptic um, when you don't know it. Um, I think it's fairer than alpha and omega once you know, because there's less to, at least for me, less to keep in, your, keep in my head. Um, so the, the alpha and omega version, if you didn't want to do a fork, would be... Um, You're replacing the space split. with alpha. Split would be defined as... Um, yeah. um, alpha not equal to omega alpha omega. Oops. You essentially uh, have to do this in your head if you want to, if I, right? I mean, kind of. Like, yeah, same thing. Um, I think once you get comfortable with abstractions, you kind of don't. Like, it just slots in there. I feel like yeah. this version, you have to do it in your head. Whereas this version, I think you could read it as like fairly directly in English. As um, what's this name of this character dyadic? I don't quite remember. Um, whatever it is, match or whatever. So it'd be like, you know, you could say like, oh, I should actually say the right words. Oops. Oh. Unique mask. Okay, so if you say, unique mask partitions the right-hand side, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's probably something that one could come comfortable thinking about that directly. I can see that. It reminds me if you're surprised the other day when I mentioned, you know, my daughter found it easier to understand APL than, than normal math notation. But like, mm -hmm. I think we're just kind of like reflecting our own years oh, of training, see. you know? Yeah. Um, I actually think, yeah, that, so, I don't know. I'm like, I'm not <laughs> a native APL speaker by any means, so. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I think that's super interesting anyway, it's fun. I think that's what's intriguing to me. Like it's interesting research to kind of think about this alternative notation and what it might mean to be comfortable with it. And you know, hopefully my my daughter will teach me that um, by by doing it. Okay, let's do these errors.
I'm going to do them before partition and stuff because I want to segue into fork. So we're using forks and trains interchangeably or trains are- oh, so, um, a tr so trains are, um, great question. So trains just refer to a bunch of functions next to each other with no other punctuation. Um, so a train, you know, an example of a train would be um, the one that we did for the power operator. Yeah. Super fun. At least I thought so. Um, this is a train. Um, right. Now this train we had a function, operator, function, operator, function. So it's different, right? So I guess this is a function and then this is an operator and this is a function. I think you'd still call that a train. Um, Another example of a train would be. We just like, did today. We did a two train today. Did we do a two train today? When was that? Um, yeah, um, it was, I think, under dyadic partition. Dyadic partition. The one that you copied from um, Adam. Oh, here. The, uh, line 31. That's a two train, right? Uh, three there's train. no train here. Mm. No, this is a th three train, no? It's a... uh, this is a three train, which is called a fork. Yes, yes, that's why I'm right. sorry, 32. Right. Uh, I thought you were looking for a two train. I'm just trying to come up with an example of a two train. So a two train, for example, two trains are much easier to understand because they're exactly the same as beside or jot. Um, so if we did, um, uh to the power of the reciprocal we don't even need that right then it's going to just you just read right to left one over three e to the power of that right oh. so that's, that's the same as no this. special rules right yeah oh. no special rules and in the dyadic case then like that um, then I believe it does three divided by three first, and then does e to the power of that. So that's going to be e to the power of one. Okay, that's um, interesting. And then this case is different, right? Because now it's treating it as this. So that's going to be three to the power of a third. Which will be the cube root of three. Um, now in J, um, this means something else. This means something else. I'll just do it this way. Um, it would be the same as um, three on both sides. It would be the same as putting three on both sides. And that in J is called a hook. So Adam's point is that we don't need a special thing for hook because we can always use the um, tilde same. Yeah, we can always use same. You know, we can put it there or we can put it on the other side to, to say, yeah. Or, or you can use tilde diuresis. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think trains are just bunches of functions next to each other. Um, okay, so let's do the arrows, which I do see a lot. So it'd be nice to know what they mean. Presumably they're going to call this up arrow, one would hope. Needs a space. Hmm. Up arrow, how about that? All right, and it's called, oh gosh, what's this again? I think our version is two, isn't it? One, okay. So it's called mix. Does anybody know why one would change this quad ML 
thing. I remember it refers to kind of like the version of the language or something. Mix or take. I like it. maybe it's just for kind of um, compatibility. Mix. Mix hip hop. Okay. So It looks like it's doing the opposite of that. Um, we've seen something to kind of go the opposite direction before, didn't we? From here to here. What's the rule of this? I'm curious. Huh? What's the rule of this rank of this? This one here. So this is going to be, so the shape of this is going to be two, three. Oh. Oh, okay. Um, where else the shape of this is two? Yeah. Right. right. Um, does anybody remember how to go from the matrix to the two enclosed versions? Wasn't that the left shoe? Um, no. Let me try. Uh, left two. This one? Let's try it. I don't know. I'm guessing. It, it just wraps it into. No, that's, that's not what right. you want. Um, we could do that with each, I guess. How about row to reshape? Um, that's not going to be the same thing because you want to actually. Enclose them. Oh yeah. And each. Oh, um, what about the rank operator? Which one's the rank operator again? Is it this one? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm sure we had a better way than that, but anyhow, all right. So, um, hmm, let's have a look at what it's defined as. An array whose items may be uniform in rank and shape, or they might differ. Okay, let's ignore the non-uniform case for a while. So then R is an array composed of the items of Y assembled into a higher rank array with one less level of nesting. Okay, that's exactly what we saw. So we started out with a rank one array and we've got a rank two array. And we have one less level of nesting. So the depth used to be two, and I guess the depth is now one. If I remember the definition of depth correctly. Uh, if they have different ranks, each item is extended in rank to that of its greatest rank by padding with leading ones. Oh, the rank is padded with leading ones. Okay. So for their example here, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so this is a vector, this is a scalar, this is a scalar. So this would get padded to become a one element vector, this would become a one element vector.
So presumably if we did that manually, we would get the same thing. Um, and then why? Yep, that's the same thing. So that's what they're saying is being done implicitly. Okay, so if they're different ranks, you get the ones. Okay, then I got different shapes, which they do. So now each is padded with the corresponding prototype. I think that a prototype like is the kind of like base default value of a type. So for a number for the prototype is zero. I wish these kind of things had hyperlinks though to definitions. So that's why we ended up with zeros. So in other words, we could do the same thing by doing it manually. So there's the same thing. Okay. Um, so let's do the dyadic version, shall we? Oh, there we go. Yeah, so if anybody can figure out how to go from the matrix back to the array of arrays more conveniently than my ugly version, let me know. Oh, this thing's in the chat. Uh, um, you can do it by providing access to the shoe operator. Okay. Great. Um, thanks, Fish. So, although Adam's told us to kind of avoid access, but there we go. Um, hang on, I'm trying to go the other direction. I'm trying to start with the matrix. Oh, yeah, which is what this is. Got it. And then Molly's got an example. Okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to be a three by three matrix containing one, two, zero, three, zero, zero, four, five, six. And I don't think these parentheses are needed, are they, Molly? Hey. Thank you. All right. Take. Well, this looks nice and easy. In other languages, I think we'd call this head. Oh, or if you do negative, it's tail. I like that. I love that they don't create more functions than needed. Why not just use negative? Okay, so that just takes the first n characters or the last n characters. Um, okay, so let's create a matrix of three by four of a to twelve. And um, gosh, why do they go straight to the hard one? Let's just start with, okay, what if we do that? And let's maybe print this out, shall we? Um, what's the keyboard shortcut for quad? Here it is. Bar, vertical bar. Wait, I'm confused. I thought that was, that's that. Uh, it's an L. Oh, it's an L. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Great. So this is going to grab the first two rows of the matrix. Cool. And this is the first two rows and the last three columns of the matrix. Okay, so here's a nice easy way to index into contiguous sections of, of an array. 
Is everybody okay with that? So two minus three is going to be the first two rows, last three columns of this bit here. All right. Well, now I'm curious about what the other arrow is going to be. Oh, uh, one other thing was yep. taking more than the amount that was in the array. Oh, thank you. <laughs> taking more than the amount in the array. So like five five rows, for example. Okay. So I get spaces in the case. Oh, I think that's going to be called its prototype. And for the matrix, we're going to get zeros. Okay, again, the prototype. Cool. So yes, I think the space is the prototype for a character and zero is a prototype for a number. Okay, is that all that, uh, have we missed anything else, Molly, or you think that's it? Um, well, uh, in the case of, oh, here, here's an example that I wanted to share. Put it in chat right quick. Thanks. Cause I found this behavior a bit odd. Sorry, or typing. not what I expected. Uh, okay, let me see what you've got. Copy. All right, so you've got um... so the the empty ones. Oh, <laughs> I see. You're getting too many things. Wait, what? Okay, so it's it's repeating the first one. Yeah, the first one. With prototypes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to leave this in here because that sounds like a weird edge case that people can figure out, but that is interesting and surprising. All right. How much battery have I got? 10%. Okay, shouldn't be too bad. Um, presumably, if I type down here, I'm going to get the down arrow. The down arrow does the thing that you wanted to do. Oh, hooray. <laughs> yes, it does. Lovely. Great. Let's steal our matrix then. Um, and it's you. Huh, how about that? Well, that's that's exactly as it should be. Okay. And you can also do it with an axis. Okay, and then drop. That's great. Everything except for. Wonder how close we are to finishing. There's still a lot of symbols we haven't done. I feel like we've done a lot. Okay, everything except the first four. Now what's this? Okay, makes sense. Everything except the last five. Okay, that makes sense as well. Everything except the first two rows. And everything except those rows. Oh, well, actually, I'm not sure what this is going to do. Uh, let's see if we can figure it out. Everything except these is something of a weird shape. So what's going to happen? Huh. Oh, I see. None of the top two rows and none of the last three columns means you're left with this. So this is actually doing something, yep, a bit different. So we get rid of all those columns and we get rid of all these rows and you're left with just the number nine. Okay. Those sound like very useful things to know about. Anything else to chat about before we go? 
Very productive day. With all the symbols, I will encourage other people to try to do the competition. <laughs> Serata, did you use the arrows much in your competition? A lot. A lot, great. Yeah, I feel like I see them around. Sorry? Excuse me, but is the competition available again? Um, uh, you're very hard to hear, Radek. You're very. I think it should be better now. Like oh, yes, now it's much better. Thank you. Sorry, sorry, it switched to. Uh, so I, I'm wondering if the competition is back available again for, for this year, the I, 2022. That's... I, I, I don't know, but uh, based on the test case on um, the show in the screen, um, you should be able to um, try. Um, working on it as well. Ah, perfect. Yeah. But but when you submit, yeah, you, yeah. you'll find out um, they ha actually have more edge case um, in the test, so you, you get your head around it. And you can always do previous and, years ones, as Sarad has mentioned before. And, and the write-ups on the forums, they are awesome. So, you know, combining, like do, trying to do the competition with the uh, Looking at the forums after a couple of tries, that, that, that sounds like a, like a really nice way of learning this stuff. Yeah. Even I, I don't see a way to I don't see a way to see the current years ones because it's got, it tells you. Yeah, I don't see it. I'm looking at their web page. It might be. Yeah, I might have to wait. Um but last time they had the, the PDF download, maybe I can post it. Um, yeah, please do, because I don't see it. Yeah, and then you can just base on the test case. They That'd normally have four of um, test case, and then you at least you have some parameter to work on. Or alternatively, maybe like post a notebook or something with the, you know, okay. with the questions, but not the answers or something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be cool. Okay. All right. Yeah, I Bye. Thanks. Bye, everybody. So much. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Yep.